I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Welcome to uh, this midweek devotion. Uh, Charge Conference is behind us, which is a huge relief for me, and probably uh, most of you have not recognized that, but it makes a big difference, and I feel a little freer. Um, In our church, the uh, Fall Festival is November 5th. We would love to see you there. Love your help if you're willing to serve for a few hours. Bake sale starts at 10, lunch 11.30 to 1, and dinner 4 to 7. Uh, we could certainly use your help at any of those times. If you are willing to bake something, we'll need baked items for the bake sale and also to go with meals. So that's something that uh, all of us could help with. If you have something that might make a good auction item, we would love, uh, love your help with that. Uh, but mainly, uh, we're here to spend a little time, uh, with God. That's, that's why we do all these things, these, uh, administrative events like Charge Conference, these fun events like Fall Festival, it's all in the service of God. Um, so let's spend a little time there today. Holy Lord, uh, I pray for each person watching this and for all of, of those people out there in the world today that they may find a moment of peace, a moment of tranquility, a moment in which you speak to them above the noise of the world. And Lord, may uh, these moments we spend together, even digitally, be blessed by your Holy Spirit. And we pray this in the holy name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. The psalm this week is Psalm 32. Um, I'm going to move on to something else at some point here, but the Psalms are so rich and I, I do always find something interesting and new in each of them. So, uh, I'm capped at 150 of these, but maybe by then I could go on and start on the ones I've already done. So this is Psalm 32. Happy are those whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Happy are those to whom the Lord imputes no iniquity and in whose spirit there is no deceit. While I kept silence, my body wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not hide my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let all who are faithful offer prayer to you. At a time of distress, the rush of mighty waters shall not reach them. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with glad cries of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Do not be like a horse or a mule without understanding, whose temper must be curbed with bit and bridle else it will not stay near you. Many are the torments of the wicked, but steadfast love surrounds those who trust in the Lord. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, O righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. There's an experience that I think almost all of us have probably had that that this psalm reminds me of. I think most stereotypically it happens uh, in romantic relationships, but it certainly happens with friendships uh, and new relationships of all kinds. And that is when you meet someone new, you sort of imagine who you want yourself to be and you try to seem like that person. I think of um, when you move somewhere new or you go off to college, for example, if, if you did, um, you think of it as perhaps a chance to reinvent yourself. How do I want people to see me? How do I want to seem? Uh, maybe you decide you, you're going to dress differently or you're going to get a new haircut or you're going to be interested in new things or, uh, or express yourself in different ways. And what I have found is that eventually 
if you spend enough time with people, you see who they really are. None of us can really keep up that facade. And so maybe if you meet someone new and, and you think they're really smart, you want to seem smarter than you are. Uh, so you use big words or you find some fancy references. But eventually, they'll figure out that you don't know what you're talking about. I, I remember, uh, <laughs> this will seem funny to some of you. When I moved moved here, I said, well, you know, I, I probably won't, some, some pastors I know wear a clergy collar all the time. I said, well, I won't do that, but maybe I'll, I'll wear a tie most days. <laughs> and I think just about everyone watching this video who's, who hangs out around the church here has probably seen me in my shorts and t-shirts and my Crocs um, doing church stuff. That, that didn't last very long, but that's not who I am. And I think a lot of relationships fail because people realize that someone is different than they really represented themselves as being. Um, especially if you connected on grounds that aren't authentic. Um, maybe I, I uh, think someone's really cool. Uh, I have not been uh, on the market for many years, but you know, maybe you're interested in someone and you find out they like jazz and you decide you're going to get really into jazz. Well, that's not going to last very long if you don't really like jazz. I don't think most of us can really uh, fake it for very long. I can think of uh, job interviews. When I first interviewed for, uh, I worked in some retail jobs, I had no retail experience at all. I had to, I didn't make anything up, but I had to really sell some of the stuff I did. Oh, you know, when I was in Boy Scouts, we did, uh, you know, stands at, at community events or, you know, I, I did some work here. I have this experience. But eventually you just become who you are. But here's the point. Um, there is no better feeling in the world than someone accepting you for who you are. Uh, I have trouble remembering, you know, Aaron and I have been together for 11 years. So it was a long time ago, but I'm sure that I probably pretended to be a little smarter than I was or a little more cultured or a little cooler. And she has since realized that I am uh, mostly a dork. Um, that I'm clumsy. Um, and, and, and truthfully, uh, that I am loud. Uh, I'm a loud person. I can sometimes, as uh, if my parents are watching this, I can sometimes be argumentative. None of you in the church have experienced that, hopefully. But she came to accept that and maybe even love it. And, and that is really, as I hope all of you know with friends or loved ones, it's the best feeling in the world. And that is multiplied by tens of thousands of millions infinity. That is the love of God. <laughs> that there is no deceiving God about who you are. There is no convincing God that you're smarter than you are or uh, more graceful than you are. But before God, the best feeling in the world is to be honest. To admit, Lord, sometimes I'm short with people. Sometimes I get angry. Sometimes I have doubts. And to know that your sin is covered, that your transgression is forgiven. I hope that's a feeling you know.
the feeling of truly being yourself before the Almighty and knowing that you are accepted as you are by the Almighty. And in fact, I believe that knowing God will teach you more about yourself. I think if you live a life without sort of taking count of your sins, your faults, your flaws, you can get a little bit of an inflated self-image. It's not that God deflates your self-image, but that God will build you up where you really are special. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. Isn't it good news? That God's love for us is not conditioned on our own abilities, but like our parents, like our loved ones, like our friends and family, times infinity, God's love is simply for who we are, warts and all. And, and thank God for that. And, and I thank all of you for forgiving all the f flaws that you've certainly experienced in me. Uh, and uh, thank you for not making fun of my Crocs. <laughs> okay, let's pray. Uh, Lord, thank you for loving us as we are. And we ask that we might uh, always uh, give all of ourselves over to you. Lord, may we not try to hide the things we are ashamed of or that we worry about, but may we at least put them before you as part of how you made us. And Lord, help us to always show kindness to others and to accept the flaws of others as you have accepted ours. Uh, Lord, remind us that each person we come in contact with is made in your image and loved by you. And may we treat them as such and see them as such until the day when we all see them together in your glory. And we pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Go in peace. Love and serve the Lord. Amen.